to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Lucy, would you do the roll call, please? Rich Barton? Here. Sarah James? Here. Becky Schwartz? Here. Ginger Shank? Here. Jeff Schneider? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Next, I need a motion to amend or adopt the agenda. I need a motion that we adopt the agenda as it is open. I'll second. We have a motion and a second to adopt the agenda as presented. Are there any questions? Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Again, I want to remind you to review our board norms that helps our group function um, and keep on track during our meetings. Next, we have our recognitions. Right, and tonight we're recognizing Mr. Barton for completing <coughs> excuse me, his uh, essential training for the MSBA's training. That's a, an additional 18 and a half hours outside of school board time to to meet that uh, goal. So congratulations, Mr. Burton. And we'll get your picture here. Next on the agenda, we have our public comments, and we have Carolyn Spraggs to talk about redistricting. Hello, board, and everybody in attendance as well. I noticed that on board docs, we were talking about redistricting for Daniel Boone for the new subdivisions coming in, and I just wanted to ask that the board speaks on if you've spoken with the city council or that, um, subdivision builders to see if they're okay with that. What I'm looking at in the future is this is the third redistricting that I know of, um, of new districts coming in, and while I totally understand the reasoning behind it, I just don't want to um, upset any of those builders by changing their districting once they've already gotten the plans to approve the subdivision in that area. That's somebody new to the area. It's very easy to be like, oh, the new school, like, want to be at the new school um, while that's <laughs> something that I think both all three of the elementary schools are great um, just something to keep in mind so that you don't anchor the you know incoming builders so, thank you thank you we'll move to the superintendent reports we have technology program evaluation yes we have mr. Greer here with us to talk about technology Good evening. Uh, keep this short and sweet, like always. Uh, where we are today, we are one to one, fifth grade through twelfth grade, with enough devices for K to four to all have their own device. We have approximately ten percent extra for every grade level, so for growth and attrition. Uh, we, the next line, I drastically redid. We. With being one to one, we are down to six PC labs, and we have charging carts in all classrooms K through seven. We have approximately, and I'm going to edit that to be 57, about 50 computing devices on a five-year rotation. We took about 30 Chromebooks that were end of life, and we uh, boneyarded them this uh, this week for spare parts. Uh, 315 access points and two wireless controllers to support Wi-Fi in every classroom. 255 cameras and video surveillance system capable of retaining video for approximately three weeks. We did have to add another server in order to maintain the three weeks this year. Um, 53 door access controls with more coming as soon as the parts arrive on the boat. 386 voice over IP phones, two internet connections, 
In addition, the technology support, supports 103 switches, 21 servers. On those are 62 virtual servers, a web filter, a cache box, and a firewall. Uh, help desk test statistics. Um, the gray area is the highs and lows all the way back to, I think I have statistics from 06. So as you can see at the end of last year, uh, we started setting new highs and we're on the high end this year, including September setting a new high. That is to be expected. More devices means more help desk events. Um, we are keeping up. I'm not asking for any help. We're, we, we got our one-to-one -one help desk technician last year and we're, we're doing fine. <laughs> um, and the one-to-one -one lighting initiative, the one-to-one -one technician, Bobby Albertson, was hired to maintain the district's one-to-one -one devices. One-to-one -one officially grades five through 12, student keeps the same Chromebook five through eight and assigned a, a new one for grades nine through 12. We have enough Chromebooks for every student K4 to have one. One-to-one uh, -one help desk tickets, uh, 254 total last year. And so far this year, we're at 106. Uh, we lowered the optional insurance from $20 last year to $15 this year. The, account, the insurance account is looking fine. Uh, cybersecurity, we have, the technology department is working with the multi-state informational, uh, information sharing and analysis center, MSISAC, which is a subdivision of Homeland Security, and the Center for Internet Security to develop safe and secure technology procedures. Right now, we are using their malicious domain blocking and reporting tools. They are doing IP and domain traffic monitoring for us. Uh, they, we get best, regular best practices, we get weekly security advisories, monthly webinars, and we will be participating in the annual nationwide cybersecurity review, which we will be and this is the first time they're doing it, so after they gather all the information, they will compare us to other school districts, both in the state and nationwide, and they'll make recommendations for us to improve on before next year's review. Uh, we have a district technology committee. Most of the time, if there's an issue that comes up, we just communicate via email. If something's more pressing, we, we actually will meet, but we haven't met since COVID, so. And so our 22-23 goals is to work with MS Isaac and the Center for Internet Security to provide a more secure networking environment. Continue to work with the Professional Development Committee to provide technology professional development opportunities for staff. And instead of increase, we are just looking to maintain the amount of technology devices and resources available to students and staff. The first time I've ever been able to just say maintain because we have enough devices. Thank you. Any questions, Frank? The only question I had is what are we doing with those like empty computer labs if they're not being, like, and that might be something that affects the computer. Uh, I think pretty much all of them have our classrooms now. Uh -huh. Or storage. Or conference rooms. Conference, conference room, room, yeah. Space gets used in classrooms, right? Yeah. I mean, they, they've all been, they're not empty. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just curious what, what we're doing. Yeah, like the computer lab at Rebecca Boone is like three, the, the social worker and the counselor. Uh, Daniel Boone is the book room. Warrior Ridge is the counselor's classroom. Um, Blackhawk still has a computer lab. That is one of the six. Um, and then at high school, one the one upstairs was a classroom, the one downstairs is a sped conference room. He didn't retire eight years. Uh, it might as well have been 30 years because that's amazing the numbers that you have now. Yeah, I mean, you guys have the, ch the chart over the last, uh, well, practically yeah. since I've been here. So, if well, I, you know, I remember when the computers first came out and the students had to teach me how to turn it on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I would have seen me at my desk and they'd say, Coach, can you help? Yeah. <laughs> but that's amazing the numbers there. You guys have really outdid yourself on that. And, uh, Personal standpoint, I, I respect that and I know that. So thank you for all you've done for that. The Chromebooks do make it easier. Yeah. I'm really curious next year to hear about what your feedback get, that you're going to be getting from what you mentioned. There was a lot of letters, and, or the 
and that's like that. Yeah, there is there's something that you were explaining that you're going to be able to hear how we measure with other districts and what we can be improving in. So I'm excited and eager to hear what you hear and how we can continue to improve as a district. Even though maintenance is wonderful, like, I'm curious right. what we can be doing differently. Yeah, that'll be a normal part of my report going forward since this is the first year we're doing it. Yeah. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. And thank you, Pat. Next, we have the financial update. Okay, just uh, finances, uh, how we're looking right now. Uh, so, uh, operating revenues, about the same. Um, expenses are, uh, are down uh, a little bit right now, mainly because we have our food service facility that is a big chunk of our budget that we haven't paid on. Uh, so it's gonna make a difference. But fund balances are, are definitely up and that's due to the ESSER funding we received last year. Uh, as you can see, we're, we're starting to see our spending that down a little bit. Um, you know, last year is the green, we had the kind of that flat line through August and September because so we received some ESSER funding. We didn't have that same trend this year because we didn't receive that. So we're going to probably continue to see the uh, spending down until we receive our um, local funds in December and January. So that's all trending as expected. Um, and so revenue, so locally we're, we're up. Uh, that has a lot to do with school lunches. Now that people are paying for school lunches, wow. it's a local uh, thing. And also Prop C funds are up. Uh, counties about the same. Um, state is about the same. Uh, federal, of course, is a lot less because we didn't get the uh, COVID money. Uh, so we, we received less money uh, this fiscal year, but uh, everything's as expected. Uh, expenses, um, kind of the same there. Salaries are very similar, up slightly. Benefits are up slightly, pretty much the same. Uh, purchase services are, are down. We just haven't bought as much stuff. We'll probably do that this month to get that. I imagine that'll come back. And supplies are also down a little bit. I think just what month did we purchase stuff uh, sort of thing. But everything's pretty as expected. Uh, capital projects actually ended the month last year negative uh, because we had a lot of our summer projects. Uh, but we have gotten the money back from DESE, so we this is our uh, ESSER three funds that had to spend the money to get the money back. And so we got a million dollars back from DESE, so we're back to about seven hundred, eight hundred thousand dollars in that fund, so we're okay. It's just, it was a cash flow timing. When the report was ran, when the money was there, so, but it's, everything's good. Any questions? Uh, hearing no questions, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Do you want to take a look at that to see if there's anything you want to ask about before we vote on it? I'll move the approval of the consent agenda. I'll second. A motion's been made and seconded to approve the consent agenda. Are there any other questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The consent agenda is approved. Moving on to old business, we have a policy approval section. Right, so we've updated from uh, the school colors and mascot, that's what we talked about last month, so we've updated that based off that conversation. Um, of course, I have more conversation about that today if you like. Uh, then we have criminal background checks, just change the names, um, makes Dr. Ross the, um, the contact information, and then the summer hours were just kind of cleaned up the language to make it a little bit more understandable, uh, but that's policies for today. I move to approve the policies as presented. I'll second. We have a motion and a second to approve the policies as presented. Is there any further discussion or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The policies are approved. Now we'll go to new business and I don't know what 
the first one is. Yeah, to tell us. Sure, it's a diligent contract. Yeah, uh, so Ford, Ford Docks has uh, been acquired by Docks. Diligent, and so this is the company replacing them. So we need a contract with them. And just uh, the reason we're switching is not because we don't like Ford Docks. We want to do something different. It's just they've been bought out, and now we have to go with a different company. Do you know if our data will transfer over? Because we have like years of yes. um, meetings that I know I've accessed to see right. what was the last time we approved that policy, what was else is going to be, you know, stuff like that. I've just researched. Yeah, I don't know if they'll be stored on Diligent, but we will have a, a file of them somewhere to be accessed. Lucy, do you know if they're? Um, I'm going to start training next week. Yeah. And okay. so I'll, I'll ask that question for sure. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure when I did the webinar thing that all of our information is still going to be on there, just like it's it is accessible. Right. Right. Yeah, right. and I, I understand that like it's not like we can choose to keep or docs. I just right. it, it <laughs> it's facing it out. Yeah, it matters. But since, since, uh, sorry. since it's being bought out basically by this other company, they shouldn't be able to keep all the the records, I would think, so. Right, so we're not 100% sure, so I don't want to say absolutely we'll be able to just go back and look at 2015 information, but uh, we will have the records some way. Yeah. Um, so if it's not part of the program, we'll figure out a way to back them up so we have information. Right. It just right. might not be as easy right now. concise and right. available as it is now. Right. So anytime you do these transfers, there's going to be some it's going to work out. Yeah. And the cost is the same. The cost is the same. The cost is the same. I see it's just a one year contract. So I guess if once we're mm. in and using the system, if we decide for whatever reason it's yep. not, we can start looking at other options. Correct. Correct. Okay. Um, I make a motion to approve the contract as presented. Second. A motion's been made and seconded to approve the contract as presented. Are there any other questions? Hearing none, if you're in favor, vote aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Infinite Campus. Okay, this is another one that we didn't necessarily want to do, but we we're forced to do. Uh, CISK 12 is ending. Uh, Tyler Technologies is no longer continuing that product. Uh, so um, I feel like we need to find a new product if we're not going to have a student information system. And this really is a kind of a big deal because this really is the backbone of all of our uh, just under just grades, everything we do basically around student information is is tied to this. So um, this would be start for next school year. We would have CISK 12 for the remainder of this year, but we'd like to, to go ahead and get started getting Infinite Campus installed, training, everyone understand how to use that this next semester, and then when we roll it out next year, we'll be good to go. Uh, there will be a little bit of additional cost. Our CISK-12 uh, contract ends in January, so we'll have to have a little bit of overlap there. Um, so, uh, and this is a little bit more expensive than CISK-12, uh, but this is the same program that Wright City uses uh, next door, and uh, I, I think we're seeing a lot more people switching to this because a lot of people are using CISK-12. Uh, so we would like to go ahead and get this going as soon as possible to, uh, to get this going, but we'll, we'll have a little bit of additional cost that wasn't budgeted. Is that the annual cost yes. that's there? Yes. And you said that it's a little bit more than CISK. Yeah, well, I mean, a little bit more. It's like uh, twenty thousand. I think when we find thirty-three thousand for CISK K twelve. Oh, so it's quite a bit more. Right. Right. But we're really kind of uh, don't have a whole lot of other choices. Uh, no, I so. I'm not questioning that. Sure. I know that, and I had. And so the same question about historical information, we've had CISK-12 for a long time, um, how, and, and so we're working on a process on that. It'll be either stored on our server or they can bring it over for a fee, so we're, we're still working through all that. Exactly. And this would impact our financial dashboard? No, right? that will not. No, our, our financial dashboard's through a different program called okay. CISPEND, and so uh, that connects to there. But in the same tone, though, uh, Tyler Technology also has a program called Tyler Analytics, which is what is our engine to publish our financial dashboard, uh, and they're no longer supporting that either, but they told us that we have that on site, and, and we're pretty proficient with it, don't see any issues with not having support, so we can run it, okay. uh, but it's, uh, uh, that is no longer being serviced either. Okay. Um, 
So we'll still use CISPIN though? Yes, we'll still use CISPIN. CISPIN will still be part of the district. These two companies are not affiliated. Tyler, they are not. Uh, Tyler is recommending that we go to that we move to Infinite Campus. So it's it's a different deal than it's different the diligent contract. Correct. 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 Yeah. And so we aren't going for a bid out for this. Well, we could have looked at but we did uh, do some investigation. There's basically two programs that you can okay. look at: Infinite Campus or Power School. Um, when we just start talking about the back end and all the information that we would need for Power School, it, the reviews weren't good. Uh, okay. And uh, what we've looked at this, we've had some people do some webinars and do some research, and everyone's been very impressed and felt like this would be a really good switch uh, and actually an upgrade. Is what a lot of people feel like. I, I feel that way because of my experience with it. Mm -hmm. I felt like I was going backwards. Right. 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 <laughs> I make a motion to approve the contract with Infinite Campus as presented. Second. A motion's been made and seconded to approve the contract with Infinite Campus as presented. Are there any further questions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Contract is approved. Staffing plan amendment. Okay, so uh, here we were just making an adjustment to the staffing plan. What we'd like to do is switch uh, a paraprofessional position to a work permit position. Apparently, at Rebecca Boone, they don't have that position, but they do at Daniel Boone and Warrior Ridge. So this gives us an opportunity to keep the staffing plan pretty neutral uh, and, and keep the same services equal in all three elementary schools. Can you explain to me what a work room thing is? Sure, what they That's do is, the right, right, right. So they would help with copies and that sort of stuff in the work room. Motion's been made and seconded to approve the staffing plan amendment. Are there any other questions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion passes. Okay. Elementary boundary adjustments. All right, Lucy, if you wouldn't mind. Okay, so we've got some uh, just a new subdivisions come in and we're trying to balancing out our um, schools. As we know, Warrior Ridge is extremely full. Uh, Rebecca Moon has a lot of new housing going into their subdivision already. Um, so anything new, we want to try to balance out the enrollment in our buildings. And so uh, right now there's an apartment complex going there at uh, by Paddock Fields. And so that's, um, we'd recommend, no one, again, no one is living in these places at this point, so it doesn't impact any current residents. This is just new, uh, new, new uh, subdivisions or apartment buildings going in. So recommend that since Daniel Boone touches there on the other side of 47, that we would uh, just move that section over to Daniel Boone uh, to help, help with the enrollment there so Rebecca Moon doesn't become overcrowded. And then this one here is up for discussion right now, and it hasn't been approved from the uh, city at this point. But since we're talking about it anyway, we might as well just do it. But uh, so this is still being debated if this is going to come. This is at the Alba Mall. Uh, there's apartment complex being discussed if there's going to allow that. So this might, there might not even be any students here ever, uh, or there could be an apartment complex going there. Um, so just thought we just kind of do this all at the same time. Then we move that to Dana Boone as well. Just kind of extend that Dana Boone boundary down to the, to the mall. And then this one here, basically uh, the subdivision starts out in Daniel Boone subdivision uh, and our maps just 
cut through the field instead of actually going on the property line. So this just takes the property line piece of that. Uh, but to answer Ms. Sprague's question, I have not talked to the builders themselves. Uh, of course, this one was started out in Daniel Boone, and uh, this one's not approved yet, but, but this one is, is approved and I've uh, not talked to the builders. But it, it really is focusing on balancing our enrollment in our buildings. So this one that's on the screen now is a apartment complex? Yes, that's correct. That's approved and moving forward? Correct. Okay. And then the one, I'm gonna say by the park, not that one. That's, that's, the, um, that's is there a reason we can't just square that off completely? Well, no, because that's where the property lines are. So if, I wish okay. I could zoom in here. There's a, there's a subdivision there. Uh, and so this is basically back up to that subdivision where there are already houses. So it doesn't, it doesn't work. Because there's current houses there. Yeah, we don't want to switch right. any right. existing. Yeah. Right. Until like an overhaul would happen. Mm -hmm. right. Yes, if we get right. to the point where we're building a new building or something, then we may look at all the lines at that point. Oh, for sure. Um, the, I'm curious about this, and, and you probably don't know the answer, but I'm just curious. I wonder how a builder or a realtor finds out what... Um, school a particular property what what boundary sure. that's within are we like have we adjusted on our website yes. when we've made changes yep, that's all been up is to date. that the only way they would find out because sure. one reason i'm asking is i was just curious and so i looked at one of the new properties that's on pinckney mm -hmm. that's on uh, the east side of pinckney that yeah. we changed sure. before and I looked on Zillow, one of the, right. the real real estate websites, and it says Warrior Rich. Right, so that, I'm not sure how that gets And updated. I don't know how that gets updated either. I'm okay. just curious, right. that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, Our website has an interactive map, you can type in your address and it'll right. it. But if you're looking at Zillow and it says this, or right. whatever it says that. And it, it happens all the time, even in other districts, because uh, that's one of the big complaints in Winsville going sure. on is, uh, that's up to the builder. That's not up to the school district to. I mean, we we to, did, we did good neighbors, to put but that. it's up to them mm -hmm. to call and mm -hmm. keep their stuff up. Sure, and that's even happened. I know some people that work here that said, "Oh, I thought this subdivision was in the mm -hmm. Warren County R three school district, but it's in Wright City or it's in Montgomery." And the realtor told me wrong. Uh, we we do get those residency questions okay. fairly often. And um, I think there's a disclaimer on the website oh, that sure. says yeah. check with the school district, right. but this is the right. information we. Yeah, I would encourage I'm anybody just... building a new house or moving anywhere, always call the school first. Mm -hmm. I know whenever I first moved here, it was in my contract that I had to live in the district. And so I called the transportation department. I'm like, is this house is, uh, in the school district? And, uh, yeah. and they were able to look it up and tell me. Yeah. And they have never once in my 26 years on the second zone asked me, ask us in front of the yeah. what district, what elementary, elementary boundary is within. Just, they just, you know, that's not an issue. How many houses are scheduled on the one on the map? Do you know? Uh, Rich, you might be able to know, but I believe it's 87. I have it yeah. in, uh, this on one this here. one. The one that's off the Give me a second here, I can look that up. Uh, let's see here. Some of these have been so long ago. Mm -hmm. Now, I will say that in our meetings, the effect on the school district comes up from our board all the time. How it, we do take into account of how it does affect the community, the school district as a whole as well in making these decisions. Okay, I've got it here. Uh, okay, so that is 97 homes in that, yeah. that spot there. And then up here, uh, oh, wrong way, is the, this is going to be uh, 272 apartments. So it's a pretty big apartment complex. Yeah, because we've, we've put some of the larger scale ones into Rebecca Boone. Right. And so I was thinking through, because most of the time we're trying to help with the Warrior Ridge situation. Mm -hmm. And so this is, I believe, the first time that we're redistricting out of Rebecca Boone right. um, instead of out of Warrior Ridge. And so with that number, it makes a bit more sense since Rebecca Boone has coming down the pipe several hundred of hundreds of homes mm -hmm. in the, some of the other spots that we've already redistricted. Right, we've, we've moved 300 homes into Rebecca Boone out of, out of Warrior Ridge, um, and then they also have 272 apartments, oh, I'm sorry, uh, 242 apartments going up north. 272 are going 
So this is 242. The 272 is going across Gastor. Uh, and then there's another 80 homes going back there too. So Rebecca Moon's going to be uh, pretty full here yeah. in a minute. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm, now that we're talking it through, I'm, I'm, I'm understanding what you're saying. Um, I, I understand that when someone is moving to a district or moving within a district that they may have some pretty strong opinions about what elementary school they're going to. I, I do care about people's opinions and I do want people to be excited about the, the school that their child is going to. And I believe in each of our buildings. Like I believe that a child is getting a wonderful education at each of our buildings. And so because I like, genuinely believe that then i care more about making sure that we're not overcrowding our buildings mm -hmm. making sure that we are utilizing the space that we have and so um like i do understand the thought of like talking with the builder but i don't even know if our builders understand the intricacies or the opinions of different elementaries because that it's like more of something that you would possibly gain opinions of by living here already or um, and so I don't know how many of our builders like how many of those giant builders are local well going along with what Sarah is saying it was important to me that we change these before we had homes there mm -hmm. because that way when people decide to buy a home or rent an apartment in one of these that we have redistrict they'll know that before they commit it to that area and so for me, that was a bigger priority to do that prior to people living there because they will know when they buy or when they rent. With the, with the housing crisis that we have like nationwide, I think that people are more interested in getting a home um, like that's going to suit their needs. But I could be wrong because I'm not looking for a home right now. So. Mm -hmm. Just so to reiterate, we have about a thousand new homes coming to us in the next mm -hmm. that have been approved that we know of coming toward us. So growth is definitely uh, yeah. on our doorstep. I moved the improvement of the boundary adjustments to include the new subdivisions in the Daniel Boone Attendance Center. I'll second. We have a motion and a second to approve the new subdivisions, moving them to the Daniel Boone Attendance Center as presented. Are there any further questions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Now we will move on. Policy first reads. Right, uh, we just found a, a name that needs to be changed in the policy. Uh, Ms. Lambert has left the district and we need to switch that to Ms. Curtis. So that'll be the only thing on the agenda for next month. We move down to miscellaneous and we have celebrations. Um, oh, go ahead. Um, this isn't exactly a celebration because I never like to see anybody um, leave our district, but uh, Officer Clark is usually here, but he's not here tonight. And I would just like to thank him uh, for all of the service and time that he has spent working in our district. He's taken another position, so he is leaving us. Um, so I'm sad for us, but I'm happy for him that he's uh, taking on some new challenges and new responsibilities, and we are going to miss him, and we wish him the very best. Agreed. Uh, district softball. Softball team won today in the summer finals, 10 to nothing. They can run the two on keys, and uh, they'll be playing for the championship tomorrow afternoon at 3.30, but I do not know who the opponent will be this time. But I don't either. Because uh, they played after us, so I have Brothers for <laughs> decades. 
um, seeing how they were doing it and setting things up and competing against other schools and just seeing truly like the joy and camaraderie of them playing and they were playing individually um, and it was just it was fascinating and so I'm excited for them I know that um, colleges are offering scholarships and so I'm just curious what's going to come out of it for our students um, but if anything the fun that they're having and they are they're competing but they're like laughing and having so much fun and so it was it was awesome to witness that um, the previous week I was able to sit in a meeting with um, Dr. Helene Smith and have a roundtable discussion with different students and hearing their perspectives and something that um, I think is wonderful and grounding is to just see that really they're going through so many similar things that all of us have experienced in those years and I think sometimes people think that kids these days are so different but really they're they're navigating a lot of the similar paths that we've had to navigate and so it was wonderful hearing their perspective and their ideas and the things that they are enjoying and and the, the goals that they have for the school um, they are so creative and I just loved um, hearing from our students um, and the last one I'm gonna say is that I got to attend a PTO movie night um, at Warrior Ridge and it was well attended and well run and it's just wonderful once again, to be back in the, the building and seeing the children playing and making giant things out of glow sticks and um, just watching a movie together and seeing families spend time together. It was just a, it was a wonderful couple of things that I've been able to see just within almost a week span. For me, it seems like a long time ago, but um, I attended the homecoming football game and was very impressed with the attendance, just the overall attendance at the football game. Um, and it, I mean, it was a plus that they won for the first time in the year, obviously, but that um, it, I was just, I, I think I got there right at game time starting and uh, the parking lot was completely full and there was people, uh, a lot of people parking in the gravel parking lot. And honestly, I was extremely surprised because I did not, for a, uh, a winless team, typically that's, that's not necessarily a big draw for, for the community, but I was, I was glad to see such a, a showing of support, I guess, from the community mm -hmm. at homecoming because it, uh, I went last year, and it, I mean, it was a big crowd last year, but not near as big as this year, so it was fun to see. I got to go to the middle school football game on Tuesday night. Uh, they played Montgomery, and uh, I must say, I'm just amazed that these football coaches can take uh, 30, 40 middle school kids and organize them and do as well as they do. And uh, I think both teams were undefeated coming into that game, and uh, I'll just say Martin got some exciting times ahead because they, they looked really good on Tuesday night and it was exciting to see the coaches and how the kids behaved and good sportsmanship on both teams and it was a lot of fun. All right, our next item is to set our next regular meeting. I uh, make a motion to set the next regular meeting on November 10th, 2022. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to set our next meeting for no November 10th, 2022. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? I'm waiting for somebody to oppose it some <laughs> week. Uh, we need to set the closed session. I move we set the closed session to immediately precede the regular November 10th, 2022 meeting. I'll second. Motion's been made and seconded to set the closed session to immediately proceed the regular November 10th meeting. All of those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? And then my favorite motion of the night, I adjournment. To adjourn. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? M meeting is adjourned.